transition. And we should be live now. Hey, chat. Welcome to Roll 20 Con. Before our hosts take over, can you just confirm for us in chat that you can hear me after our delay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Staring carefully. I see us now, so hopefully they'll us. say hello. Woots. Notice us, chat, senpai. Lots of lots of hugs. All right, hey, they can hear yeah. us, everybody. So hey. Nolan, take it away. Welcome to Roll Twenty Con. Hi, I am Nolan T. Jones. I'm a co-founder of Roll Twenty and one of your co-hosts today for Roll Twenty Con. Uh, welcome. We are super excited to be doing this. For those of you who I don't I don't know exactly how you got here without knowing this, but Roll Twenty is <laughs> virtual tabletop. Uh, essentially, we're a way to play video games. My shorthand is that uh, we can play anything that's not physics based. So you couldn't play, say, Mousetrap, but you could play Monopoly, but probably 90% of everything that's played on Roll20 is tabletop role-playing games, and you're going to see a lot of that today. Uh, a whole lot of work has gone into doing the programming that you're going to see today. Uh, we've got a whole lot of cool people lined up. Uh, first and foremost, though, uh, my co-host for the day, who will be jumping in throughout to lead you on this adventure, uh, Anna Prosser. Hello! I'm super stoked. I was asked to to be a host here for Roll Twenty Con, and that means I just kind of get to come poke my head in, hang out, hear what people are doing throughout these 24 hours, and that kicks off with this segment, which is our our welcome. Hello, and we have some really amazing people here. So I think that it would be great to start out by just telling the chat who we all are and how we're involved in Roll Twenty. And Nolan, you kind of mentioned uh, already who you are and how you're involved with Roll Twenty. But uh, is there anything else you want to add to that? I, I, I think the only thing I want to add is that it feels a little bit odd to be kicking this off. So, so advantages of our company being spread out all over the place. I'm uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, but my co-founders, my, my partners in not crime, because we haven't done anything illegal yet, uh, <laughs> are in Kansas City area and Arlington, Virginia. Uh, the reason we made Roll20 was for ourselves. Like It, it literally was a program that we just made for ourselves to be like games and then we put on Kickstarter as kind of a, hey, I wonder if anybody else is interested in this. And it turned out they were. Uh, but uh, it feels odd that they are not here right now. They are sleeping. They will be around later and helping out with things. But uh, hi to Richard Zayas and Riley Dutton in the VODs whenever you get to this. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's basically all I got. So Anna, how did you first, because I, I, you've been using Roll20 for a very long time. You were an early adopter. How did you come into all of this? Oh, I like that. I like that I'm an early adopter. You're a pretty good. early adopter. You yeah. were early on the streaming drain. Yeah, so um, hi to anyone who might know me or might not know me. Um, I work mostly in video games and come out of esports and I currently work for Twitch. So um, even prior to working for Twitch, I streamed a lot. And one of the things that I um, started doing early on that has been probably my most regular stream for the last two and a half years or so is uh, Miss Clicks D and D, which was a show that we started um, with a few women who just wanted to do something to put kind of some women role models out there doing something that traditionally people were thinking women didn't do. And uh, we play D and D every Tuesday on on our channel on Twitch, and we um, very very quickly. In fact, I think we started out right away on Roll Twenty because it was kind of the only option we could find that would allow us to play with two people in Canada and two people in the U.S. and guests from all over the world in different time zones and different places. Um, so yeah, I've been on Roll Twenty for quite some time now, and still don't consider myself an expert. So I'm really excited for Roll Twenty Con because I get to celebrate the thing and learn all of the things. But uh, actually, the person who probably is my biggest connection to Roll Twenty is my BFF. Right? Wait, where is she? <laughs> there? Yeah, <laughs> right there. Uh, and that's Stephanie. Stephanie, who are you, and how you? How are you involved with Roll Twenty? Yeah, um, my name is Stephanie. Um, on the forums, you may know me as Avison. I am your community manager. Um, and my story sounds a lot like Anna's because we actually started Miss Clicks together. Um, we saw a need for women role models, as Anna mentioned, and we decided to do something about it. So we uh, started that D&D &D stream, and it started with me in the back end as marketing. 
Um, and through a few connections with working with Roll20 and being sponsored, um, when their community manager job opened up, I applied and was lucky enough to be selected. Um, so here I am now. We're, gosh, going to be two years in November, which is crazy. The longest job wow. I've ever held. That should say something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, and I... Uh, I've been working with um, the rest of our Roll20 team on this project since December. So we are very, very excited to be here. And um, I'm going to be running uh, if, production. If this thing goes well today, by the way. What is that? This thing will go well today. We would all die without Stephanie. Yeah. Yes. That's Thank Stephanie. you. Stephanie put a lot of groundwork today. I put a lot of work in uh, leading up, and I'll be here with you running production behind the scenes until about 5 o'clock in the morning. And then uh, those sleeping guys are going to jump in and take over. So. Um, and actually, if we want to go along the lines of, of hiring, Steve and I were actually hired at the same time. Um, so, Steve, why don't you tell us who you are? Uh, I am very, very privileged to get uh, to work on the back end of Roll20 and uh, do the coding and work on the databases that make Roll20 run and keep your games healthy. So I got to come from a completely bizarre set of backgrounds that had absolutely nothing to do with coding or role-playing games. And uh, the uh, Roll20 uh, owners decided to pluck me out of my life of obscurity in big business to come <laughs> work for uh, a so small... You came, like... <laughs> Actually, I wrote them a very impassioned letter about how big of a fanboy I was of their site. <laughs> and uh, they gave me a, an interview and a shot. So I'm, I'm very lucky to be here. This, this, this brings me to a question. Did anybody here apply via character sheet? No? <laughs> I, I can't count the number of applications for jobs that we got that were character sheets. The problem is that most of the people who were sending those uh, were, not, uh, were not necessarily graphic designers. But... A lot, a lot of that's lot cute of, it is it's super cute it's I, I, my application was actually an api script that i wrote <laughs> for Ooh. roll 20. do you guys remember i know anna knows and nolan my application the art that i did i totally drew in paint for the head desk for the head yeah, yeah. yeah, the head <laughs> of, yeah. we 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 uh modded a, or we planned a fake right. uh new feature and i drew everything in paint so I remember that. You don't have to have real editing skills, kids. Oh. <laughs> I <need to> <laughs> awesome. Dude, I should dig that up. I bet I have it somewhere and we can show oh, it. Yeah. So I, I, I got to mention in our behind the scenes green room chat uh, that, I, that I want to before we hop to the next person that uh, so today, since we figured we'd have all these eyeballs, all these people watching and talking with us all day long, we would do something good with it instead of just, you know, yay us. Uh, so we are partnered today with CyberSmile. Uh, they're an anti-cyberbullying organization. They do some really cool stuff in terms of offering resources and information about how to deal with online harassment. Um, we are giving away a token pack uh, today for donations, and we also have available an awesome shirt. I think, Anna, are you rocking the shirt right now? I'm rocking it. Yeah, hold on. Hold webcam. on. Hello. Uh, Hello, webcam. <laughs> There we go. And there's there's a there's a sweet back to the shirt. It's a pretty sweet it's shirt. Back here, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> back there, I promise. Um, but yeah, so we we are offering some really cool things. If you're wanting to donate to Cyber Smile, um, there's information about that all over our social media, and we'll be promoting that throughout the day. But it looks like we already have, if uh, if I'm reading this right, 198. Uh, Damn donated so we are we are moving 198 yeah. bucks yeah sweet things, things are things are moving i think <laughs> before I think we even good. finish introducing ourselves right. already yeah. donating. <laughs> so awesome yeah so that little derailment aside so if we're if we're going in order of joining the band uh i i, I believe adam you'd be yep my next i think so um yeah hi I'm, I'm Adam. I'm GM in residence here at Ye Old Roll20. <laughs> um, I, was, uh, I was born on the planet Krypton. I was raised by farmers. <laughs> um, no, Wait. that's not right. Uh, I went to see <laughs> Zorro and my parents got shot. No. Uh, Wrong so story. <laughs> I get confused. I, don't, I so rarely get to be me. I'm always like an orc or something. Um, 
So hi, uh, yeah, I uh, I joined the team a little a uh, little over a year ago now, and have been running many a show. So you probably recognize me from uh, the shows that we do here: Burning Wheel, um, Old School Adventures, Mage, Ryutama. We've got lots of games covered in the last year. If you haven't watched those, once you recover from Roll Twenty Con, like the rest of us, <laughs> get up our YouTube. So many vibes. Um, but yeah, I got uh, I got involved with Roll Twenty by way of uh, role play when we started uh, Swan Song uh, about two years ago. And uh, Swan Song led to me, my, my resume for Roll20 was several hundred hours of me GMing. You know, Here you go, you know, resume, boom, watch those. Um, and it's been- it's You been just sent a copy of the Dungeon World rules and we're like- yeah. yeah, I made a game and then I played a bunch of games and uh, now that's what I do, so. Uh, I'm super excited. I get to play Tenor Bunch of Zero, which is a game I love and never get to play. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that today. I get to be on a panel playing some Thirteenth Age, running Dungeon World. It's gonna be sweet. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I saw the, I saw the donation thing. It does it does work on stream. That's super exciting. <laughs> Yay! Noise or something so that I know when it's going off. Oh my god! You can, you can thank Phil for that. Yeah, it's it good. <laughs> I like you did a good font choice, Suzanne. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Suzanne, is she next on the list, or she who's, is. who's next? Who okay. can be? Suzanne, who are you, and how are you involved in Roll Twenty? <laughs> Suzanne. Hey guys, I'm Suzanne. I am the brand manager at Roll Twenty. Um, I was always a closet video gamer. I wasn't really open about it ever, um, and it was only actually. It's a sadly recent time that I actually started playing tabletops. It was only like four years ago that I ever played D&D and started like right after 5th edition came out uh, and kind of just never stopped since then. All of my friends since then have ever, everyone I've ever met <laughs> since then has always been uh, through tabletops. So when Roll20 was hiring and which I always kind of knew when they were hiring and uh, a friend of mine actually sent me the job description. I went, oh my God, I can do that thing. I can do that thing and I can do that thing and I can do that thing. Um, so I got super excited and thankfully they were kind enough to take me on the team. Um, so yeah, I do all of the public relations, media outreach stuff. I work with the amazing creators that we have selling on the Roll20 Marketplace. So if people are ever selling on there, you talk to me and I become your best friend and then we run through meadows together and it's delightful. Ooh, and I didn't know there were meadows involved in that I process. Were, I ran the Marketplace for like three years and I never got to run through any meadows. Dang it, there was a secret door. You had to get through the door. You hold, you're know. holding out on us on the meadow door. Yes. They're imaginary uh, meadows. Come on. It's a role-playing game thing. Just imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, if you go into a real meadow, it's like an instant yeah, but, failure on a fort save. You die of allergies. There's yeah. bears out there. Don't worry I feel, about it. I feel like there should have been artwork, at least, or something. Stay inside where it's safe. We have to draw the meadow. As you Where's go. my meadow oh, pack? Okay. We get the artist okay. thing in there. It all comes together. The meadow is on the GM layer, Nolan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's, That's a roll 20 joke right there. there you know. <laughs> There's our clip. Probably true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm really excited for today because I'm doing some panels. I'm also going to be in 13th Age. So that's Have all. Have you played fun. 13th Age yet? Nope. It is fun. <laughs> I, I, like, I like that one. I'm looking uh, forward to it. I got a donation. Sorry. <laughs> it, it, it's exciting. We need it. it we is. need it. <laughs> like, hooray. That I, but the problem is it's delayed and I don't know what's happening. Right. How, do, how does one deal with this? I don't know. <laughs> Well, the chat's going to have to just keep telling us. That's that's what it is. So that's it's on you guys, Roll20 app chat. So <laughs> on you. Last, last but not least, uh, Phil, how did, how did you get involved in this? Uh, like five months ago, um, after I had been using Roll20 for several years, uh, I had I joined very early, hadn't really had a reason to use it because I lived like I lived with the people I played <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't really need to use the internet to play with them but then I moved out to Colorado away from all of my friends all of my friends live in different time zones so I was like oh that you don't have to stop playing D&D &D. <laughs> um, and then back in January or before January, you sent out the request for a new developer. And I was like, I guess 
that kind of <laughs> sounds like what I can do. And I, and I hated my job at the time, so I figured it couldn't hurt. <laughs> but there's nothing That's how like every great story starts. There's nothing like loathing your current position in life to motivate you to search for situations that are less less sucky. Right. So, and, and that's what Roll Twenty is. The only one that really, liked her job. Yes. Coming I in, liked right? my longest term job. Yes, yeah. I was in publishing. I worked at Cork Books, which is a super nerdy book publisher. There were other jobs, though. <laughs> <laughs> the jobs we do not speak of. Yes. This is a lot more fun. Uh, e oh yeah. Even even weird hours of the morning doing <laughs> Still, still a lot better than the other things out there. So we are pretty lucky. It is all because you wonderful people who subscribe and get things on the marketplace and do all that red stuff. So thank you for doing that because this is all really rad to do. Well, I was thinking, speaking of being up at crazy hours of the morning, now that we know who all of us are, why don't we talk a little bit more about what Roll20Con is? Because we've mentioned it very briefly. You talked a little bit about donations and CyberSmile, but what is what the heck is going on? Why are we starting at midnight? What, what do? So we, we wanted to do 24 hours. Uh, we didn't want to do a full weekend. Uh, and, and goals for the weekend or for the day uh, we want to try to break our concurrent users. So right now that sits at about 13,000 people playing at the same time. So hopefully a lot of you are playing games today. Uh, we do have a lot of sign-ups for games later in the day, so it's looking like we're, we're on track for that, but we'll see what happens. Um, uh, we also incentivize that by doing something really cool. We turned on our game, uh, what would usually be subscription features, to everybody. Um, so if you like Ooh. playing things like Dungeons & Dragons where you're in a dungeon and it's dark, dynamic lighting is a really great fit for that. It allows you to walk around like you've got a torch and things like that. So you're, you, know, you see only the, what you're supposed to see in the hallway and not everything else. Um, so that's, it's a that's good way an, to lose a character if you're me. It, it's an excellent way to die. Yeah. I'm, guessing, <laughs> I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of one day long Edge of the Empire campaigns. <laughs> That's, that seems incredibly likely. Um, but beyond that, uh, we want to make certain that there were a lot of, uh, there was, like you would at any other convention, uh, that there was content that you could go and just kind of sit and watch panels. So we've had a lot of panels today, including uh, live play games. I, I, I don't know what the split is. I'm look, I've got the schedule in front of me. Man, we are doing a lot today. <laughs> um, but we've got a couple 5th uh, edition D&D &D games, 13th Age, uh, Ten Rabancho Zero, Dungeon World, and then we've got some how to game master on Roll20, advanced Roll20, and looking for group tips and tricks, being a marketplace creator, uh, publishing in the digital age, and then a, a fiasco game early this morning, as well as an API tips and tricks uh, panel. So that is, we've got a whole lot of things lined up to do. As, as far as why we're doing an online convention, um, I, I think it's just one of those things that we've talked about doing since very, very early on. Uh, we, we've, uh, within year one, a few different people were doing online conventions and we always thought that we'd do it a little bit differently. Uh, so, so there were folks who, they'd have f people individually sit down and do their rooms as far as like, like a Google Hangout convention and things like that. Um, which seemed like a lot to us, but we thought we could, I don't know, uh, spin it in a different direction and just kind of play with the amazing community that we've got. Uh, so it, I, I don't know. It, it, I think to some degree today is going to be what people make of it. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see what all happens in terms of games played, and I do intend to spend a large portion of my day hopping around Twitch. This is, while this is the official overarching uh, just like you could at any convention, you can kind of walk around to the other tables and see what people are doing. So that's that's going to be a lot of my day. As a matter of fact, I, I think, Steve, you're running a game later today, right? Off the, off the main channel, right? I, I am. I could not attend a convention and not actually do some role play. So mm -hmm. yeah, I have a game going on at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific. And anyone who wants to come survive a horror slasher movie where you're the actors um, is invited to come play. And uh, the way I'm raffling off the 10 slots for the game is uh, based off of highest donation to uh, Cybersmile. 
So uh, take a screenshot of your donation and paste it in the LFG. Yeah. And that uh, the sticky, if you're a Roll20 user, um, you'll head over to our forums and you'll find a new Roll20Con forum just for the day. And Steve's game is actually sticky to the top. Ooh, sticky. Cool. Yeah. So, the game, by the way, is terrifying. It, it, Steve, it is. Steve <laughs> definitely Sticky myself. like the blood he will spill. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's a really creepy... Yeah. My, uh, Riley, the, the lead developer who I work directly under, almost would not forgive me after I ran this game for this group because he was, you know, so freaked out by it. Really <laughs> was affected by it. Like, no joke. <laughs> Meanwhile, well, I think I laughed through the whole thing. You, did, you have a very correctly. different response to fear. I did. It was very funny. <laughs> I thought yeah, the whole right. thing was hilarious, but <laughs> there's a reason I have the I have a horror show on misclicks where we play scary games. So I mean, that makes sense, right? <laughs> so if people want to play uh, in Steve's game, they can go to the forums. What if they want to create their own game and they've never done that before? How should they go about being part of this breaking the concurrent user record? I can take that one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the easiest thing to do is to head over to Roll20, um, create any game or visit the game details of any game you already have, and you'll actually see a box right there. Uh, click that box, and you can, all of a sudden, your game is, is valid. You're ready to play. You can play with your friends. Um, but you can also head over to our Looking for Group tool, and everybody who's got public listings up and has it tagged for Roll Twenty Con is listed there. So um, that is, I think, the register page is in chat, um, and we can uh, paste the link for the Looking for Group tool now. But um, there's like five or six pages of games, which is like, is there like thirty games a page, Steve? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's great. So there's a ton. There's, ton. there's a awesome. whole lot of games for today. And I know you already mentioned that the. It's called the the plus level subscription, right? Is available for free. So you can use all the plus level subscription tools. And then also, I know you guys have some cool prompts that that you're encouraging oh, people yeah. to use during the game. So tell us a little bit about that. So I, I should get this in front of me before I... Uh, the, so it, we were thinking, you know, in terms of... Usually when you do like a film festival or things like that, you have prompts to try to keep everybody... It, it's one of those things, since everybody has all these individual games... Uh, we wanted to be able to look back at kind of the experience and have shared something together. You know, like even though I was only playing in my game with my friends, what made it specific to the convention and made it really feel like I was involved in something else and, and got to do something with a community. Uh, so we, we put in two prompts for the day. One is a prop, uh, a spotted handkerchief is is something that we're asking if you can find a way uh game masters and players to sneak that into your game um and then uh, we also have an occurrence for the day and that is to try to defeat a bully without violence so when when you're when you're dealing with that extra mean npc who won't let you do what you want to instead of immediately coming to blows at least try to defuse the situation with some sort of another check Mm mm-hmm and the, those prompt, the prompt and occurrence are both on that uh, Roll20 register page, which I actually just put in the chat. So, Anna, we have about two minutes um, before we're going to end this. Actually, one, because it just clicked over. Oh, really? Yay. Whoa. Time flew. Uh, I think the most important thing... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Wrong. Uh, what did we say? No, nope. that's right. One minute. Well, <laughs> sorry. Well, boy, boy, howdy. All right, boy, well... Boy. Um, I think, and Nolan, correct me if there's anything else that's more important, but I think the most important thing would be just to really quickly talk about CyberSmile sure. um, and what they stand for and why Roll20Con is benefiting them. Uh, it, it was one of those things we, we talked and talked. Uh, you know, again, we have a bunch of eyeballs today and we went, we need to do something cool with it. We need to do something good with it. Uh, we went around and around on what exactly we could do and we kept on coming back to CyberSmile. Uh, they've been really great. Uh, Scott Freeman over there has put in a lot to, uh, to help us and to organize and to promote this. But essentially what they do is they help uh, folks in situations of online abuse. They, they've got resources in terms of you know, steps you can take to protect yourself, in terms of uh, you know, what to do when you feel like these sorts of things are hopeless. They've also got just a really positive community uh, they, they do a whole lot. If, if you follow them on Twitter, 
sometimes they're just posting happy cat gifts. <laughs> it's the sort of thing that they, they want to try to just bring a uh, brighter experience to our online interactions. So they've been a really cool partner leading up to this event, and uh, we're excited to raise some money for them today. And, and, and I should mention the donations today, uh, they are done with, when you do it, you get a marketplace pack. The marketplace pack is really cool. Um, the, the folks from the marketplace who, who donated their time and artwork to making that, uh, it is some really awesome stuff. Sudan, so do you want to talk about that really briefly? Do we have enough time to? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> really, really quickly. Uh, yeah, um, everyone who is going to be on the Being a Marketplace Creator panel, as well as one other person who I'll mention, uh, was able to contribute their own artwork, original artwork. Uh, those people are Devin Knight, Gabriel Pickard, Russ Hapka, um, sorry if I'm butchering these names, by the way, uh, Brass Badger Works, Greg Taylor, and Fernando Dominguez. So we we're really happy to have them all. Have um, There's really cute stuff. You can mm -hmm. find it. If you go to donate, you can see the pack. They they themed it as well, too, didn't they? Like somebody they who was did. a hero in their life or, or, or the like, and somebody who was a, they, they viewed as a villain was how they. Yeah, all the tokens it. are bullies. A couple of them are sort of reformed bullies. Uh, that was Brass Badger which approach was people, animals that would be bullies, but seem to be nicer heroes. Then there are lots of bully villains and the maps um, are dungeony, evil caverns, uh, mazes that would be really hard to navigate. So cool stuff. safe. Don't go alone. <laughs> awesome. Well, Anna, can you uh, say goodbye for us? Sure. I am unfortunately not going to be with you throughout the evening so that I can be fresh and hang out with you all day tomorrow. So I'm going to be back uh, tomorrow during the day. I hope you guys have a great time with panels tonight and live D&D. There's even a game starting at 5 a.m., which I think is so hardcore. So I hope you'll stick around. I hope you'll donate and play games, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you all so much. Stay tuned for API tips and tricks. That's right. <laughs>